Hi, this is Cleo with Train Me for Tech. In this lesson, you will learn how to create an interactive vocabulary card game for your classroom or for your trainings. So let's get started. Now I wanted to create a flashcard game for common computer terms. I'd like to use this with a longer training as a knowledge check. What it does is it's great to reinforce new terms or definitions for your students, or even if you're doing adult learning. This is a great game or feature to break that learning up and really give your learners something fun and something different during the training. Right now we're under templates. When it asks us, what will we design today? We are going to use Canva AI because we need it to code for me. So we we'll click on code for me, scroll towards the bottom. It says, see what you can do with AI. And we want it to code an interactive flashcard game. So I click on that. It looks like nothing happens, but what this does is it gives you the prompt needed to begin coding this game. I'm gonna take the prompt that's already there is for a Spanish language set featuring five common greetings. So that's what type of game it is. I'll go with this game and make the adjustment right after the game displays or it creates the game. I'll click on submit. And you'll see that Canva is creating my game. We can see it coding. And just a few years ago, computer scientists, and people that do computer programming would have to come up with this code and manually code this. So the fact that we have access to it and this artificial intelligence is helping us get started or helping us to create this game is, is pretty outstanding. Now it tells me I'll create an interactive Spanish flashcard game with flip animations and progress tracking. So it's generating our code and sometimes this does take a few minutes. So now we see our Spanish greetings flashcards. We can click on it and it will flip that flashcard for me. We have two buttons. There's a score and also progress and a next button. There's some things that I wanna change and customize with this. I've already written down the various things that I want my game to have. So I'm going to copy and paste them. I also include this prompt in the description as well. That way you can just copy and paste and adjust it as you need for your own features. So I copy and paste. And what I'm telling it is I want an interactive vocabulary matching game. So instead of flip game, I want it to be a matching game. The topic is computer hardware. I want a time limit of two minutes. I want to include a start button for the timer. I want it to provide hints as feedback for incorrect matches, but do not provide the answer. I like it to use bold colors like canvas colors or color palette. I want it to replace the aesthetics with a modern 2025 design features. We want to step it up just a little bit, use scoring and hints, and add a try again button as well. So those are all the changes that I want to make with this game, and I'll click on submit and see what comes up based on what I've told the system that I want to create or how I want my game to be. Be creative as you go along and use different prompts or make adjustments. My recommendation is after you get the game pretty much the way you want it to flow and the way you would like to use it, then just give commands, one or two commands at a time. I've noticed that if you give the system too many commands after it's built the game, then it may not work correctly or you may lose some of your features. Maybe um, in one case, my buttons didn't work. So if I instructed one prompt at a time, it seems to do a little bit better after that game has been built. We're going to wait a few minutes and I'll be right back to continue. Now Canva AI has finished this version number two. And one thing I do want to show you all is I have the version number two that we just created, but I can always go back to version number one and take a look at that. If I like that version, I can select this option at the top right to use it in a design, but we're going to continue with our version number two. We see that it has a start game button like I asked. 
It's telling me I have two minutes to match all terms with their definition. And so I'm going to start the game. And let's see, I have SSD. And that's for solid state drive. We see my score going up and my time counting down. So this is a matching game here for my central processing unit. Let's see if I click on RAM, which is the incorrect answer. It gives me a hint. Let's look at that again. Temporary storage that loses data when powered off. So far, so good. It's giving me what I would like. Now, if this was my own game and I was completing it, I may add a few more buttons at the bottom. It doesn't have a try again button like I asked it. So let me ask it one more time. Include a try again button that gives the learner three tries. And let's see what happens. Telling me I'll create a computer hardware matching game with a try again button that gives learners three tries per game session. So it's generating the code for that now. While that code is generating, I like to show you at the very bottom left-hand corner, it tells us that camera code can make mistakes. Please check for accuracy. So it has where you can give feedback and also the terms of that agreement. This may not be perfect. It's not going to always be perfect. And sometimes you may have to continue to make adjustments or even start over. Now our version three is ready, so we'll start this game. I'm going to click on hard disk drive and motherboard. It gives me a hint. And it also has the number of tries that I have up here. I actually want a button for those tries. So what I will do is I would continue to prompt it, maybe be more specific, how I want my button to look, maybe the color of my button. But if I wanted to use this in a design, I could show the code at the top right hand corner and copy this code, copy the complete code to the game. If you have notes, you may want to put them in your notes or put them with all of your prompts together so you'll have those. Now I'm not going to copy code. I'm going to click on use it in a design. And for this example, we're going to click on website. We know that Canva allows you to create websites but it also allows you to embed these interactive games and various features that it has into your own website. So at the top right hand corner, we have published website. I can publish it as a website and just send my learners the link. I can click on share, click on website. It gives me a site address URL and also has the option to give me a new domain and publish this. Once I publish it, I can share that URL with someone else. Another way that I can do this is I can go to see all after I click on share and click on embed. I click on it one more time and the embedded links will go live. I can take this HTML code or this smart embed link code and copy it into my actual website. For instance, if I had a WordPress website, I could take this code, copy it there. If I was using an authoring tool such as Articulate, Storyline, or Rise, I can do the same and embed that code there. And the game would actually show up within my website. I am going to preview the game in the whole screen and click on Start Game. I have my BIOS. I'm going to match with Power Supply, even though that's incorrect. And I click on BIOS again and mark the correct answer, basic input output system. We see that it's giving me my score. I have a GPU. This will be the graphics processing unit and we see my score go up. So this is how the game works. I hope that you all are able to utilize it for your classrooms or your training. And in this lesson, you have learned how to create an interactive vocabulary card game for your classroom or your trainings using Canva AI. This is Clea with Train Me for Tech. Until next time.